Well, everybody, look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sighting. Two male cheetah, our male friends. Unfortunately, they seem to be about to head off into Mala Mala, which is a bit sad. But we're just going to have a quick view of them. What a joy to have these cats, Karula and her cubs, over the last little while. We have truly been blessed beyond it. We are so lucky. We'll just move along here. I'm pretty sure the other one will get up and come across as well. Now, we can only be on the boundary. This is the kind of end of when we're going to be able to see them. Isn't that wonderful? Unfortunately that's going into Mala Mala, but that's okay. They look very fat, they look like they've had an exceptionally good meal. Stunning stuff. Fantastic. <laughs> so there are, for those of you who don't know everybody, we're not going to be able to see them again once they've gone, once they've got into Mala Mala. James Richard, you say, considering cheetah have such an incredibly low genetic diversity, you say, are they um, likely to be more susceptible to diseases? Definitely. Absolutely. It, to some extent. But at the same time, although they are probably susceptible to more diseases, everyone, they are pretty resilient. And, you know, the, the, big, the big legend you'll hear is that cheetah are all descended from one female. You know, their genetic diversity is so low that they're probably all descended from one female. Now, I'm not convinced that that's true. I don't know. I mean, they can pretty accurately tell, I suppose, from from uh, sort of genetic studies. But whether that's, you know, how susceptible to disease that makes them, or if it's actually true or not, I don't know. But I think it's become one of these things that is quoted by guides all over the world now simply because, you know, I'm not sure how thoroughly it's been investigated. But they do have a lower genetic diversity and apparently you can, you can do a skin graft from any cheetah anywhere in the world and it will take. And that's because the genetics of them are pretty low. The pool is shallow. Very nice. And they're just marking territory. And the territory, of course, of a cheetah is temporary. It's not a, it doesn't stick in an area like a leopard or a lion territory because their distribution is almost solely, um, it's solely based on their ability to avoid uh, other predators. We are very, very lucky, everyone. Cubs, leopard, and magnificent cheetah. This is a rare treat. And for those of you who are perhaps new viewers, you know we don't see cheetah very often at all. It's not common for us to view them like this. And simply because there are not that many around, uh, the habitat is not ideal for them. Oh, I got a picture there, if you can believe it, Liam, but I did miss his feet, unfortunately. He was sort of in focus. He's almost in focus. <laughs> Everybody, I am the world's slowest and possibly most useless photographer. Yeah, no, it's a disaster. I'll show you the picture a bit later. Viam, of course, 
will derive enormous amusement from it. And I think one of them, although they're probably brothers, and although you'll be told that there isn't a great deal of kind of dominance between the two, it would seem to me that the um, it would seem to me that one of them always follows the other. So this chap, you can see, is basically doing what his brother's doing. He's marking on the same trees and marking in the same places, but well behind. Let's just see if we can't get a last view of them.